Driflim has access to one of the coolest abilities around, being Unburdened, which doubles its speed after consuming its item, making it a true force to be reckoned with. My name is Just Weavile, and welcome to my Pokemon Wi-Fi Battle series, where we try to bring out the potential of every Pokemon there is. Let's get started. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun to my opponents. So they're going to lead off with Glimora. Nice and shiny as I let off with my Zapdos. So this is not the worst lead in the world. And um, they're probably going to use Stealth Rock straight up because they're more than likely focused Sash. So I'm going to go for a Volt Switch straight away. Get some st special damage on that thing. It does outspeed us, um, which is dangerous. Uh, they could have gone for a Power Gem, but it would have KO'd anyway. But we go for a Volt Switch and that does nearly half, which is fantastic. Now all we have to do is go into Indeedee and then just fire off a Expanding Force. And the great thing about this is it forces them to go into King Gambit. So we'll go into Indeedee now. There we go. Zoldio comes in and the King Gambit's the thing we need to get rid of and also the Zoroark to an extent um, for good old Driftlin to do its thing. So let's get the Psychic Surge up like so. There we go. And we'll just go for, I want to go for an Expanding Force. I'm going to go for a Expanding Force and hopefully we get the KO here. But they could go into Braviary or, or King Gambit to be honest with you. They withdraw the Glimora as you would expect. No point letting it go down when you have switch-ins. And they do go into King Gambit so that's great. So I knew King Gambit was coming in but I decided to still go for the Expanding Force just in case. Um, they just wanted to sack Glimora off to get free, so choose something else. But they can't go for Sucker Punch, which is great. So what I'm going to do instead here is I'm going to... I have got a switch in. I've got Zapdos. Um, Zapdos can switch in. And we can potentially get a Static on it. So I'll do that because they can't go for a Sucker Punch because of the uh, Psychic Terrain anyway. So they wouldn't go for that. They go for a Kato Cleave here, I think. Um, so Zapdos coming in is great for us. They go ahead and withdraw the King Gambit, making a double switch. And they go into Zoroark, who is not illusions so they haven't said it to the they said it to their last pokemon in the party by accident obviously um that's fine uh what we'll do is we'll, we'll go for a vault switch again uh, i'm pretty confident we can take a hyper voice or a shadow ball no problem nasty plot is a bit more terrifying that's for sure nasty plot is a wee bit more terrifying so we go for a vault switch it should do about half yeah about half awesome zap those come on back Let's see what we can go into here. So we have to have something that outspeeds the Zoroark um, and can KO. So I think Infernape is the best thing to go into. Because Infernape is faster with the Choice Scarf. We know that. So let's go for a uh, Thunder Punch should KO. If Volt Switch. Yeah, Thunder Punch should KO. And it will, it'll hit the Toxpex if the uh, Switch in. But the Thunder Punch comes through and takes out the Zoroark. I went for that just in case Toxpex came in. Because Toxpex would be a good Switch there. But obviously they didn't expect the, the Choice Scarf. So... Uh, Infinity gets a KO, which is awesome. Zoroark and King Gambit are both the Pokemon that we need to get out of the way for um, Driftlet. So now, in comes this thing. Um, they're probably going to Terra by the way they've brought it in. If I had to guess, I'm, I'm, I'm not a betting man, but if I had to guess, they're going to go for either an Espoing or a Psychic with sheer force. Um, we don't have a Dark type, so they get it for free. So I think our best bet is because they've got Stealth Rocks up, so we can't go Glimora to live the hit and then outspeed the next turn and go for a Stealth Corone. So we might have to go in DD again. Um, or we can go Drift Flame and get the Psychic Seed, but it's still going to hurt. I don't think they Terror. I say we just keep this in and go for a Thunder Punch. Yeah, Thunder Punch comes through. It's Iron Fist Booster, so it does a lot of damage. Um, and they are, in fact, Weakness Policy. Which is terrifying. Because now, if they go for an Esper Wing here and get a Speed Boost, which they have done. Not only do they came with Infernape, they get a Speed Boost. And now nothing on my team outspeeds this Bravey area, I don't think. Which is absolutely terrifying. Now, they don't have sheer force if they have the speed boost, which is good to know. They're probably tinted lens. In which case, Drift Limb is the answer here. A hundred percent of the time. So we have to go Drift Limb here. So we'll go Drift Limb now. There we go, Drift Limb comes through. Stones do dig in, which is unfortunate. Now they probably go for another Esper Wing because of the psychic terrain boosting its power. Um unless of course it's flying so it might not get boosted i don't know um either way we outspeed at least so we should go for a thunderbolt here or a hex if we assume king gambit can come in we should go for a thunderbolt thunderbolt comes through though driftlim gets the ko on the bravey area which is fantastic now this driftlim set is not the best sweeping set driftlim is a very hard pokemon to pull off but if it can do something in this game i'll be very happy and taking out the bravey area, stopping it from sweeping our entire team is definitely something so in comes the Mammoth Swine. Now this thing can go ahead and get burned. Um, I'm going to Terrestrialize into a Dark type. So I'm not weak to the Icicle Crash. And I'm going to burn it. And then we'll Hex it. So let's go for a Dark type um, Will-O-Wisp. And being the Dark type is really good. Because it means that, that King Gambit can't Kato Cleave us. So we'll go into the Drift and Dark typing. 
boom. Means we can get hit by Earthquake now, but again, if we burn it, it's not going to be that much of a problem. Um, to be honest with you, I was starting to regret putting a uh, Calm Mind on this over like Strength Sap. Strength Sap could be really useful, but we get Will O Wisp anyway. Will O Wisp, uh, Strength Sap will be so useful, but Will O Wisp is going to burn that Mama Swine, meaning this Ice Cool Crash, which is now neutral, won't do Diddly Squat. There we go, it does no damage, which is awesome. And we also break Focus Sash potentially with the burn, which is fantastic as well. The weirdness does disappear, so they can go for an Ice Shard here, but I'm going to go for a Hex nonetheless to try and get uh, some damage off. So the Mama Swine does withdraw, and the Toxapex does come in, which is interesting. So Toxapex coming in is very interesting, so um, that's fine. We go for a Hex, it's going to do no damage probably. Decent respectable damage, but nothing too drastic. So what we'll do now is, because... Because we got rid of the we got rid of the Braviary, we don't necessarily need Driftblim to be unburdened to outspeed everything. Uh, maybe the Glimora. Do we go for a T-Bolt here or do we go for a Calm Mind? They might go for a Toxic. I'll go for a Calm Mind. We'll just try and get some damage off on this Toxapex, really. It's all I can think to do. So, Special Attack and Special Defense is going to boost, which is great. They go for a Toxic Spikes. They're setting up for the long game. But you know what? We are very fast. We are boosted in special attack. Let's go for a T-Bolt. Or do we go for a Will-O-Wisp? Let's go for a T-Bolt. T-Bolt comes through. I love this animation when it does T-Bolt. The little spinny thing that it does. Um, they go for a Haze, which is going to get rid of our Calm Mind. But it doesn't get rid of the Unburden, which is nice. Um, so all stat chains were eliminated except from Unburden. So now we can just go for a T-Bolt once again and get the potentially KO on this thing. So let's go for a Thunderbolt now. They withdraw the Toxapex. I suppose I could have gone for a Hex here, but I didn't want the King Gambit to come in for free. But Glimor is the one that comes in anyway. Which is great for them. Um, we go for a T-Bolt. We outspeed, obviously. So this Thunderbolt, if it 2 kills, which it does, we can just go for another, no problem. So Thunderbolt comes through. And Driftblim is putting the pressure on this game, I will say. So the Glimora goes down. The Toxapex is going to have a Regenerator, um, which is unfortunate. Um, but the Mammoth Swine should go down to a Hex. All right, King Gambit comes back in. We can burn this thing. That'd be amazing. That'd be fantastic if we could burn that thing. So Supreme Overlord comes through. Now, they could suck a punch here, but I'm going to go for that Willow anyway. There we go. The Willow Wisp comes through. Burning the King Gambit, and that means that this Iron Head that's coming our way is going to do Diddly Squat. And if they go for Low Kick instead, it's going to do nothing. But it turns out that Lumberry. Ah, Okay. So that's unfortunate. Iron Head is going to KO us. Yep. So Driftland did really well this game, though. It put so much pressure on. Burned the Drift, uh, the Mammoth Swine. It nearly burned the King Gambit for one for the Lumberry. And the Toxpex is on its last leg. So I think it's looking pretty good right now. So let's go into... I want to go into Haxorus. I really want to go into Haxorus. So we'll go Haxorus now to try and finish up the game. So we'll go Blade. Like so. Point of Stones do dig in. And so do the Toxic Spikes. But Earthquake should finish off this thing. And I'm pretty confident that we can do the job. Um, let's go for an EQ. If they Terra here, actually, thinking about it, if they Terra flying here, we're kind of boned. They withdraw. Okay, so what are they going to go into? What do they go into? Mama Swine? Mama Swine's burned, so the Ice Shard won't do too much damage. But all they need to do is weaken us enough for the um, Suck Punch from King Gambit to do the job. So that's fine. Earthquake comes through. It doesn't get the KO, but we should outspeed the Mama Swine. They have got leftovers, which is good to know. They probably showed that earlier because it already lost some HP, but... The Poison plus the potential Ice Shard the next turn is going to kind of ruin things a bit. So what I'm going to do instead is, because Earthquake won't KO here, I'm going to have to risk it for a Biscuit with a Scale Shot. So they're actually going to Terastalize. They wouldn't go into a Steel or a Fire type or a Rock type. It's going to be something that can, yeah, resist ground. So Grass, that's it's a good job we went for a Scale Shot there. It's a real good job we went for a scale shot there. And hopefully they know that hopefully they don't have ice shard. They don't have ice shard by the looks of it. A scale shot is gonna come through and that'll finish off the mama swine, which is great for us. So what's great here is that um the King Gambit can no longer terror. Meaning we if we can somehow do something about it, we it's it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting thing to have here. So Mama Swine comes through and it goes down. They've got Toxapex left, and they've got um, the Sucker Punching King Gambit. Now, here's the plan. Here's the real plan. King Gambit comes in. That's fine. We still have Indeedy in the back, right? So Supreme Overlord comes through. That's fine. That makes it terrifying. 
but it can't do anything if it can't outspeed us. So if we go into Ndidi now, get that Psychic Terrain up so that we can be, um, so Sucker Punch won't work, basically. Then we bring Hagstras back in and go for an EQ. Oh, it's, it's GG. GG right there. So that's that's the game plan. So Zoldio comes in. We get poisoned, unfortunately. And then the Psychic Surge comes up, setting up the Psychic Terrain so they can no longer Sucker Punch us. They did go for a Sucker Punch, and that's obviously going to fail. It failed because we switched, not because of the Psychic Terrain. It would have failed still if because of the Psychic Terrain, even if it didn't work like that, but it, do, it does work like that. So anyway, what we need to do now is we need to go and um, we Dazzling Gleam here. We Dazzling Gleam just to get as much damage off on the King Gambit as possible. As they go for a Swords Dance, which is interesting. So why Swords Dance right there? Unless they have some way of getting rid of the terrain, which I don't think they do. I don't think King Gambit gets Defog, right? Uh, let's go for a Dazzling Gleam. We could have Encored it there, but I want to just get damage off. Because again, I outspeed it with Hagstra, so I'm not afraid of this thing getting Swords Dances up. I'd rather just get the Dazzling Gleams off. Um, as there's the Iron Head, that's going to take out Zoldio. So we got, the, we, we got the Psychic Terrain up. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. The Sucker Punch is no more. Doesn't matter how many Supreme Overlords, doesn't matter how many uh, Swords Dances it gets up, we outspeed it with Haxorus and we KO with Earthquake. Especially now we've got two Dazzling Gleams on it. Why is that King Gambit so big as well? Like, what the heck? It's massive compared to Haxorus. Let's go for an Earthquake. Now, Haxorus is taller, but you can just tell. Earthquake comes through, obviously, because they can't Sucker Punch. King Gambit, it goes down. And now it's just Toxapex, I believe. So, King Gambit does go down there. But again, we got the Toxapex, and there's the Toxapex coming in. It wouldn't surprise me if we saw a forfeit here, but they have got some health left, so there is always the option that they can live. Let's go for an EQ and find out. Earthquake comes through. Toxapex should go down here. Yes, it does. Awesome. So Toxapex goes down. And that is GG. So Driftlim did really well that game. Hactress obviously finished off the game, but Driftlim did super well, and I really enjoyed that one. GG. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Reese. So they're going to lead off with Doll. Which is going to be the Chinchino, as I led off with my Petunia, the, um, can't remember its name, Glimora. Glimora is the one. So, obviously, this means it got tidy up. We can't really stealth rock in its face, because it'll give it an excuse to use it. So, let's go straight for a Sludge Wave and get some damage off on this thing already. They go for a tidy up anyway. Interesting. So, tidy up comes through. Cleans the battlefield nicely done. They get the attack and speed boost. They effectively got a Dragon Dance, which is awesome. I need to use Chinchino. Sludge Wave comes through. And that nearly takes them out, which is absolutely fantastic. So I'm pretty confident we can live an attack. And even if we don't, we get the Toxic Debris up because it'll be a physical attack. So I'm going to go for a Sludge Wave once again. And they go for a Bullet Seed, which should... Mm, ooh, with the Skill Link. Maybe, but they're probably Technician with Loaded Dice. But there's the next Bullet Seed. We might live. We might barely live, to be honest with you. So there's the next bullet pull, bullet seed. We might live. Oh, we might live. It's a close one. <gasps> it hit four times. Nice. So the loaded dice for technician, but not anymore because they are now fainted. So doll goes down, which is fine. There we go. Down it goes. Now, if we get stealth rocks up, they are up for good. Right, Swindle comes in. Who's Swindle? Swampert. Nice. Nice and shiny as well. Gotta love it. So they get poisoned, which is awesome. Awesome stuff. And we just go for a Stealth Rock here. There's no reason not to go for a Stealth Rock. They're already poisoned, so there's no point in Mortal Spinning. Um, stealth Rocks will be up for the whole game if we get Stealth Rocks up now. And Haxorus just needs an excuse, really. So Stealth Rock come through. Which is fine. For them, for us. Not for them. And uh, they go for a Liquidation, which is, of course, going to do a lot of damage. But you know what? We're not bothered. Because we got Toxic Debris up twice, and we also got Stealth Rocks up. And we KO'd the Chinchino, so... A Toxic Swampert is no longer a happy Swampert, that's for sure. So, what we can do now is, we can go into our Ndidi ourselves and go for an Expanding Force. This will bait the Armoury Jin. But then the Armoury can just go for its own Expanding Force, so that's not the best idea I've ever had. Um, I think our best bet is going to be Driftlim with the uh, Hex, to be honest with you. So, we'll go Driftlim now. And Hex will do a lot of damage to the Swampert, to the point where Hex just will scare it out. So, let's go for a Hex now. They withdraw. What are they going to go into? Grimmsnarl? I think Grimmsnarl would make the most sense. So, Fiyumi comes in. That is going to be the Ninetales. The Ninetales wants to get the Aurora Veil up, probably. So, the Grimmsnarl might not be a, a Reflect live screen set. We go for a Hex, though. It's going to do a nice little bit of damage, at least. Nothing too drastic. We'll keep Drifting around, because the Psychic Seed with the uh, Psychic Terrain could be really useful. 
And we're going to Infernape. Infernape seems like a solid switch here, so let's do that. If they go for a Aurora Veil here, we can just we can still just Flare Blitz or U-turn, one of the two. So we're going Infernape now. And this lighting in the stadium, by the way, looks beautiful. So nice. I love the sunset lighting. It's so nice in this game. Uh, right, they got the Aurora Veil up. That's not very good for us. If the light plate's up for a long time. So we're going to have to go for a Flare Blitz. Um, they probably just go back into Swamp Pit to get the Stealth Rocks up. But we could have Grass Knot. So they might not. Um, I'm going to go for a U-turn here. We go for a U-turn. They don't switch out, which is interesting. Interesting. I thought they would either go into our armor rouge to get the weak armor boost or the swamp hurt, but I guess not. So, um, what do we do here? So, I think we go into in DD 100% of the time. There we go, and DD comes in like so. We get the psychic surge up, which is great. Balfia gets weird. They go for a moon blast that's going to sting a little bit, but not too much. As uh, we can definitely live another. And what we can do here is we can go for an expanding force ourselves. And this base the Grim Snarl in. And they go for another Moon Blast. They won't KO us. There we go. We live on two. Nice. Expanding force comes through. That should do a lot of damage. Doesn't get the KO though. And now what we'll do is we'll switch out. Because we know they're going to go for a Moon Blast. So we'll go back into Infernape to take said Moon Blast. And then we'll just go for a close combat. I think close combat is the best option here. So that's what we're going to do. So Infernape comes in. They go for a Moon Blast. It's going to do half. Yep, about half. Just over half. And uh, this way we keep the NDD around, which is what we kind of want. Because it could it could Healing Wish later. Um, so we're going for a close combat here all the time. They withdraw. Are they going to go Armor Rouge now? Because I've set up the Psychic Terrain for them, so they definitely could. Swindle comes in. Which is the Swampert. So Swampert can definitely take a close combat. We know that. Stealth Rocks do dig in, which is great for them. For us, sorry. Close combat comes through and does no damage. And they could be Rocky Helmet, I guess. Unless we've seen leftovers already. I can't remember. Um, it doesn't look like they are Rocky Helmet, but they do get poisoned, which is nice. And then the Aurora Veil wears off, which is absolutely amazing. So I'm going to go for another close combat here, and I'm going to let them take my Invernape out. So close combat comes through. Doesn't quite get the KO, which is unfortunate. Defenses drop. They go for an Avalanche. And that's going to take us out. So that is unfortunate um, that that has to happen that way. But you know what's really great about this situation right now? i give you one clue. If that armor is a weak armor, that means we do not need a Swords Dance to sweep through this team. But unfortunately, this one put does go down. So what I'm going to have to do here is, if we assume they're going to go Nine Tails, we should go Haxorus. Right? We should go Haxorus and uh, go from there. So Haxorus comes in. Because this will bait the Nine Tails into going for a Moon Blast instead of a Aurora Veil. So that's kind of what we want. Because they don't want us Dragon Dancing, right? Because they're going to think we're a Dragon Dance set. So what we'll do is... We'll go for the, we'll break the mold. We'll go for that terrestrialization and we'll go for a terror blast. There's no real reason not to. All right, we're going to terrestrialize into a fire type right now. And um, they didn't terror with anything yet. So we have to be careful with what we do. So we terror fire, which is great. It's absolutely fantastic. We terror fire. And hopefully they went for the attack here instead of the Aurora Veil. They did. They went for the attack, which is great. That's going to bounce right off us. Um, and we go for a Terror Blast, which is definitely going to KO this Ninetales right now. And the great thing about this uh, setup is that the Grimmsnarl is no longer a big threat either. Because Spirit Break is resisted and False Surrender is usually non-existent. They usually have Spirit Break if they're an attacking one. Warpath comes in. Is that going to be the Armor Rouge? It is. Nice. So we know what this thing's game is. It wants to go for either an Endure um, or something like that. But we get the Stealth Rock Chip and that's going to be really important. Because this thing is likely going to be weak armor. So let's go for a scale shot right now. They do terrestrialize. What type would they terrestrialize into though? If they're expecting an earthquake, they would go something else. Fairy. Terra Fairy Armor Rouge. That's an interesting one. That is an interesting one right there. So scale shot's not going to work, which is unfortunate. And they go for a meteor beam, which is awesome. I love Meteor Beam strats. I did not know Armor Rouge got Meteor Beam. That is absolutely epic. And I'm going to have to try that. Because that looks awesome coming out of his cannon as well. So Blade goes down here. Which is very unfortunate. But you know what? I'm happy with that. 
I'm happy with that. You know why I'm happy with that? Because now we've got a good excuse to go into Drift Blim. And the thing about Drift Blim here is it does really well. So let's go Drift Blim. We'll get that on Burden Boost from the Psychic Seed. And yes, I know Drift Blim's flying, but the, the Psychic Seed still pops even though you're flying. Um, so Special Defense is going to raise. So we can take a hit even better from this thing. And now we can outspeed it as well. So let's go for a Calm Mind first and foremost. So we go for a Calm Mind. This is looking like a Drift Blim potential. Potentially Drift Blim stuff going on so we get a special attack and special defense boost meaning we can take this expanding force easily they go for an expanding force it should still do about half to be fair wow that is ridiculous damage right there that is some ridiculous damage the weirdness disappears as well which is unfortunate because it means priority moves could work but i don't think they have priority moves and um, we go for a hex here 100 percent of the time and ko this thing so they withdraw warpath because it can still be useful later and they go Black Whip, which is a really cool nickname for a Grimmsnarl. I knew it was Grimmsnarl straight away. But because of the Toxic Spikes, at least Hex is going to do a little bit more damage than it was before. So, Stones also dig in. We go for a Hex. It should still do around a third. Uh, oh, ow, okay. That's way more damage than I thought. There's the Poison. I think we win with Drift Blim here. I think we win with Drift Blim. Could be wrong. Let's go for a Hex again. Light Screen. Oh, the Orange Jewel Screen set. So they had dual screens Grimmsnarl with um, Aurora Veil Ninetales. That's pretty cool. So Hex comes through and that's not going to KO this time. The snow does stop, which doesn't really matter. And then the poison is going to take effect and nearly KO the Grimmsnarl, which is awesome. So um, now I don't unfortunately have... I'm going to go for a Thunderbolt just in case they go in DD, but they obviously aren't. So Thunderbolt comes through. But in DD's immune to Hex, so I didn't know whether they would just switch it in or not. You know... Right, Warpath comes back in. So this is an interesting turn of events. So why is Warpath coming in now when we outspeed them? Have they got a trick up their sleeve? They've used their item. It was Power Herb. Let's go for a Hex. Yeah, Hex comes through. That's fine. Boom, down goes Warpath, which is awesome. So Warpath goes down. And now we just have the Indeedee left. Right? Right, Mikado comes in. That's going to be the uh, Indeedee male. They get the Psychic Surge up, but they also get put... Wait, where's the Psychic Surge? Are they not Psychic Surge? I don't know, but they get Stealth Rocks anyway. Yeah, they are Psychic Surge. I thought Psychic Surge would come before the Poison, but I guess not. I don't know why I had that mixed up. Anyway, let's go for a T-Ball here just to get some damage off on this thing. Thunderbolt comes through. It's a plus one, so it should do a nice little chunk. Little chunk, yeah, definitely a little chunk. As Dazzling Gleam comes through and KO's Drift Blim, unfortunately. But this is not the end. We are still fighting strong. As um, we're able to now bring in our best Pokemon to deal with in DD, to be honest with you. Which is going to be our own in DD for a start. <laughs> we're going to go into our own in DD for now. See if we can win the speed tie. No reason not to, really. It's, just, it's the in DD show art, showdown. In DD showdown. So I think Expanding Force does more than Dazzling Gleam because of the double power and the fact that it's in Psychic Terrain and the fact that we're a Psychic type. So I'm going to go for the Expanding Force here. We do have speed, which is nice. I think it'd be more because it looks like they're a more bulky set as opposed to our speedy set. So they go for a hyper voice, which is going to sting a little bit. <laughs> Takes us out, in fact, since we had like 2 HP. Well, this is going to drag out the poison a bit, which is what I'm kind of going for here. So um, I'm not 100% confident that Zapdos will win, the speed, uh, w win this um, speed game. But we might do because it looks like they're a bulkier set. So let's go for a Volt Switch, see if we can get outspeed them. They go for the expanding force. We should live. We do live, which is nice. So this battle was nice and close. The Vault Switch is going to nearly KO them. And then the Poison will finish them off. So that was a nice and close game. But yeah, pretty fun game. GG Reese. That was an, I, I enjoyed that.